The Labour Party presidential candidate in the 2023 general election and former Anambra state governor, Peter Obi, says there is no possibility of remaining in the party ahead of the 2027 general election if the internal crisis continues. Obi says while he is making efforts to change the party, he could not die with it if the crisis continued. His statement is coming amidst the leadership and ownership crisis between the Labour and the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, which have continued to tear the opposition party apart. Well, to speak on why Nigerian political parties are prone to crises and why reconciliation is usually difficult, we now turn to a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress and a former commissioner for information in Edo State, Kasim Afegboa. Good to have you on uh, Newsday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. So what do you make, first of all, of Peter Obi's claims that pretty much he is willing to work with the Labour Party, but not willing to die over the issues that uh, they are creating and might and so forth? What, what do you make of these comments? Well, I, I find Peter Obi's comment very disappointing, but not surprising because uh, some of us uh, knew from day one that uh, the Labour Party was just a special purpose vehicle to pursue his own uh, selfish ambition of trying to preside over the country. But if you go through my article today, I try to situate the failure of Labour Party being unable to reconcile his own internal differences as that of the failure of the presidential candidate himself. You see, it is good for you to nurture an ambition. It's also good for you to ensure that the vehicle upon which that ambition is being pursued is intact and seen to be very organized to pursue your aspiration. But uh, in the last one year, the Labour Party has been undergoing some kind of ding-dong affair. They are unable to put their house in order. The candidate of the party in the 2023 election, Peter Obi, is unable to, you know, explore the resource of dialogue, of conversation, of interaction, and to reconcile all the issues within the party and package it into a brand that uh, other future aspirants we want to latch onto. But uh, I find it very disturbing that in Nigeria, People only pursue their ambition, not necessarily looking at the vehicle upon which that ambition has been pursued. And political parties are very important in terms of leadership recruitment, because that is the party upon which, you know, a candidate who wants to be a governor, a senator, a House of Rep member, and even president will want to pursue an aspiration. And for you to say if you cannot reconcile the issue, you are going to run away means that he didn't have all that it takes. I've been issued to even aspire to govern the country or to preside over the country. Because if you are unable to reconcile differences in Nigeria, that means you will run away from the country if you are being faced with crisis in the country. And so for you to make that kind of, for him to make that kind of a statement that uh, if they are unable to reconcile, he will leave that, that he's out to build the country and not build the party. I find that as very contradictory, very, very contemptible, and uh, it takes a lot away from his leadership credential, also called leadership credential, so to speak. Well, you know, I find your comments, you know, a bit ironic, considering the fact that um, Nigerian politicians jump ship at will, they cross carpet at will. I know at a time you were also within the PDP. You did not stay to build the party into what you wanted it to be. You jumped ship when it became uncomfortable. So I'm wondering, you know, if it's really fair to attack Peter Obi for doing what every other Nigerian politician does. How does that contribute to nation building? Okay, thank you very much for your question and for your comment. I, have, I, haven't, I haven't accused Peter Obi of trying to defect. And I didn't contest president of Nigeria before. I haven't achieved that particular status. That's one. Secondly, Peter Obi is seen in, in, in some quarters as the face of opposition, so to speak. And one will expect that a party that gave him that platform to, preside, to contest for the president of the country, that he will be able to offer leadership and turn that party 
to something that to become a brand for anyone who wants to aspire to govern the country or govern the state or be a lawmaker, as the case may be. Uh, it, it, for him, at his level, at that status of trying to preserve over the country, to the point that he was even laying claim that he won the election, it, for him to say he will abandon the ship without helping to resolve it means that he was not prepared for leadership at the issue. It is different from him trying to defect to another party. If he's not able to resolve the, party, the crisis in his party, and he goes to another party that he seems that he, he thinks is stable and peaceful, then he'll be missing the point because the whole essence of leadership is for your ability for you to resolve issues in political parties, uh, try as much as possible to make it a veritable platform that will help people to pursue their legitimate aspirations to govern the country, to govern the state, uh, to be a lawmaker and otherwise. So the point I'm making is that at that level of a Peter will be who is seen in some quarters at the face of opposition to be giving up hope that Labour Party's intractable problem are not resolvable. That because of that, he's going to jump ship to go to another party. Takes away a lot from his so-called leadership credentials. And I'm saying that that is not the way to go. Because if you want to rebuild Nigeria, if you want to reform the country, you must start from even reforming the vehicles which people usually uh, uh, use to pursue their aspiration. You need to reform the political parties. You need to ensure that the right persons are there, things are done pro properly, there's right accountability, there's leadership uh, 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 cohesion, and all of that. So that people will not be looking at, oh, if Peter will be were to be president, this is all he will have done. Look at the way he has done the Labour Party. But now, they will, they, will, they will find it easier to criticize government, to run no manners of commentaries, but the small party they are running, the Labour Party, is a mesh in no manner of crisis, uh, internal, internal frictions and contradictions. And if they are unable to resolve it, then Peter Obi should not even dream of aspiring to be president of this country because it is all about himself, I, me, and I kind of uh, political scenario. And that's what I'm uh, talking about. I, I, if I'm going to run for, a, a, for president of the country, I would, I would look for a party that uh, can give me that, that platform. And if I, if I lose the election, I will ensure that I build such a party to become something that people will adore. And people will also um, uh, you know, find worthy to, 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 to present their own aspiration. But the way Peter Obi is going about it is a complete miss of what political parties as vehicle for leadership recruitment is. Well, let's just lay off Peter O.B. for a few moments and focus our attention on uh, the PDP, uh, Tiku Abubakar. Uh, he called on opposition political parties in Nigeria to form a coalition ahead of the 2027 general elections to take a page out of the recently concluded uh, Senegalese uh, elections. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, uh, there, is no, there is no harm in uh, bringing forward suggestions, except that uh, if Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi would uh, concede that uh, there will be no vacancy in 2027 by the special grace of God, that uh, they will this, uh, the current occupant of the office will serve first term and he will present himself for the second term, uh, they, then I will understand that the point they are making might make some sense in terms of helping to enrich the political process by having multiple candidates. But uh, this is the turn of the southern part of the country. There's no vacancy. If you're a northerner, you want to aspire to govern this country in 2027, I will plead that they bury such thought. Uh, it's our turn in the south to balance the political algorithms of the country and ensure that we serve, we serve out our eight years as they have done before power will rotate down to the north again to be 2031. And so, uh, Atiku may be making points in terms of trying to rev off his own followers, but the, Sen the Senegalese election that uh, he used as a basis, they are, con con uh, they, they, they are com um, completely uh, opposite, because uh, the candidate of that ele election was his 44-year-old Senegalese, Basiru uh, Faye, uh, who uh, is, is more or less... Uh, uh, you know, like a, like a son to Atiku Abubakar. So if Atiku Abubakar is thinking of Cortez 27, he needs to make a rethink. He needs to think about the new dynamics, the contemporary issues, uh, you know, uh, in the country. 
and try as much as possible to promote younger ones to come and aspire to govern the, uh, to preside over the country at whatever level, whether governors, house of rebel president. But in the case of Nigeria as it is now, I think we have a president who is doing well and uh, who will contest a second term. God granting him good health. God preserving him up to 2027 will feature uh, President Bola Metinubu again to serve his second term. After that, maybe Atiku may, be, may want to contest at 86, 87. I don't know, but uh, I don't think he should be making that kind of point at this time. Well, some analysts will say that he's simply trying to follow the footsteps of the APC that came into power, you know, through forming alliances and then gave us a candidate that eventually became president, you know, in his 70s. But I would like us to go back to the issue of Peter Ob. I'm reading some comments now, and some analysts believe that you're simply trying to shift attention from the APC's failures, you know, by attacking Peter Obi's leadership qualities and speculating on what his presidency would have been like. Because if not, how do we explain the fact that a large number of Nigerians, you know, are now talking of the good old days under the PDP, from all available statistics, the country, it seems, was better off under the PDP. Shouldn't you be more concerned about that instead of attacking Peter Obi's so-called leadership qualities? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I don't begrudge those who are sending in comments, uh, but the facts of the matter are as plain and simple as I have presented them. If there is any way I have uh, stated anything to the contrary, they should take me on on that. You have a political party which gave you a platform they call the Labour Party. The Labour Party is embroiled in crisis and political turmoil. There are internal contradictions, internal rife every, every day. There are arrests, there are litigations, all manners of things. I expect that a man who aspire to preside over this country with all the disparities in the country, with all the intricate logic and our you know, differences, should be able to sit down the round table and summon the leadership of a Labour Party and nip the crisis in the board from day one. And if the thing continues to fester, it takes away from him that he's unable to reconcile differences in just a small political party. How much more will he do if he's given the opportunity to preside over a larger entity called Nigeria? So it's not about attacking his personality, it's not about shifting the shifting the goalposts, it's not about shifting attention away from what APC is doing. As far as I'm concerned, given the scenario that we met on ground, the, lead, the president of the country has done so well in the last 10 months, and, and, and is still continuing in doing that. And so, if Le, Peter Obi wants to show that he's actually an opposition, and he wants to give face to opposition, he should do the little things, those minute details. And these details are that your party is in crisis. They are causing destruction to even government. You are causing destruction to President uh, uh, Tinubu. Please resolve the crisis in your party. Choose the right leadership. Make yourself accountable to the people who, who donated money to your party. There are accusations here and there. There are counter accusations and all of that. That is not the kind of thing we want to see in an opposition uh, political party. An opposition political party should lead by example and tell the ruling party, well, you are not doing well in this area. This is how we think that you can, you, we, we can do better. That is a way of seeing opposition as an integral part of the democratic process. But when your party is embroiled in crisis and you are unable to reconcile little differences, everything hovering around each of accountability, money missing, money not missing, and all of that, uh, the treasurer is fighting, chairman, chairman is fighting, this candidate is for talking. For God's sake, that will not advance any tangible discourse in terms of political uh, uh, equivocation. So I am of the opinion that those who are supporters of Peter Obi should tell him that he should sit down and do less of travel, reconcile the differences in the Labour Party, reduce the noise level you know, in the political uh, landscape, and allow President Tinubu to concentrate on the huge task of presiding over the 200 million Nigerians. Because the more the more Labour Party continues in this manner, the more distraction they give to the system, and uh, that will not be good for us in the overriding over interest of the of Nigerians. Um, uh, Mr. Afegbo, I just want to ask you about certain of the scenarios. You were just saying that the, uh, that the Labour Party, or Peter Obi in particular, is distracting uh, the president from doing his work. Can you go into detail exactly of what is uh, the issue with the Labour Party distracting the APC or the uh, president from 
getting things done. You see, you see, democracy flourishes in an atmosphere of political stability and uh, tranquility. As a president of the country, he will be getting his security report every day. Have you forgotten that just barely two weeks ago, the Labour Party office was invaded? You know, the Nigerian Labour Congress also uh, made an, reportedly made an invasion also. And so there have been quite a number of crises. There are accusations and counter accusations. Those are not the kind of noise we want to be hearing. Those are not the kind of uh, stories we want to be hearing. We want to be hearing that, yes, Labour Party is advancing alternative policies to what the government of the day is offering. If the government is of the day is saying that this is the way to go, they are trying to form a platform for engaging our infrastructural decay, they are trying to form a platform for engaging our economic uh, policies and programs, and the CBN is talking about new monetary policy and all that. I want a Labour Party or any opposition for that matter that is serious to be offering an alternative. No, this policy you are coming on board with is not, is not going to yield the, the right dividends or the right results. This is what we want to do. That way, uh, people will now see now you are playing constructive opposition that is full of ideas and initiatives. But for you to be fighting yourself over issues of money you got and money you didn't get, you carry yourself to Nde we without even informing INEC to go and do a, a convention, you are already telling Nigeria that you have blocked the position of presidency for Peter will be in 2027, closing the shop to anybody. Is that, is that democratic? Is that how to promote internal democracy? No. So the point is, Labour Party as an opposition must go and learn all those rudiments of what a, a typical opposition should do at the, in, in, in the period of a ruling party presiding over the country, so that when they are making interventions, there will be interventions that are rich in terms of knowledge, that are rich in terms of content, that are you know, constructive, and that reflects the wishes of a larger majority of Nigerians. Not this one they are doing now. I think are, there's too much of gangsterism in the Labour Party. And the earlier they stop you, the better for the polity. I mean, it, it's, it's very funny, you know, that the presidency would be concentrating on the gangsterism in the Labour Party instead of some criticisms that they've made in the past. I know that Peter Obi has clearly come out to, you know, to speak against the insecurity in the land, the hunger, the anger, you know, the fact that fuel subsidy was removed without any palliatives in place. He has made a number of criticisms. Even at Elijah Tukwabubaka has done the same. And of course, we do know the reply that we've gotten from the presidency. They've dismissed it. They've talked about the fact that they were bitter because they did not win the election. You know, they've more or less gaslighted the whole of Nigeria into thinking that what we are going through is not actually reality. So how then do you explain what you mean by they need to be constructive in their criticism? and stop the gangsterism. Shouldn't the government focus on the issues okay. and leave Labour Party to be on its own? Well, uh, the question, I think, I think from your question, you have also fallen into the trap of the opposition. What I said was very straight and clear. When you are giving criticism, criticism is very cheap. I can tell you that the shirt, the, the shirt you are putting on, the dress you are putting on is not looking beautiful. That if you had made maybe the hands, instead of keeping them short, you make them longer, that maybe they will, it will come out fittingly on you. When you are offering criticism, give us an alternative viewpoint. Not just, we all know but that there is insecurity about, in Nigeria. I, I just talked you can about what, you know, what the they offered. The fact that fuel subsidy should not have been removed what without they, palliatives what they, in place. We've been hearing a lot of promises from the government, you know, but okay, so far we haven't okay, seen okay, any okay, one of them okay, work okay. in reality. And can we focus on the issue? That's another let thing me, you're doing. You're let just me, let me, Talking about my dress. Let's speak about the issues. No, 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 no. Yes. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving. I'm just giving an example. And I'm let me reflect on the, the issue example. of subsidy. All, all the three of them. Mm. Go ahead, please. All the, all the, all the, all the three, all the three candidates. Uh, President Bola Chinubu, President uh, uh, candidate Peter Obi, candidate Atiku Abaka, all said that they were going to remove fuel subsidy. When they would remove it was a matter of their own choice. They didn't say that. They didn't declare. But President Tinubu came on board and removed it for the very first day he was sworn in. That's a matter of choice. You may say that the choice is wrong, but that is the way he feels that he will, he will uh, confront the issue of first subsidy. And we have been contending with that. Whether we like it or not, there is improved revenue that is going to the state and local government. Attention should not be shifted from the opposition to those uh, monies 
allocations that are going to local government and see whether the chairman are actually getting or whether the uh, governors are arresting those allocations midway so that they could be the government can be closest to the people to the local government, then the state government should also be doing something with the increased allocation. And uh, when you look at how much they are sharing per month uh, in terms of federal allocation, it has never happened like that in the history of this country. And yet, governors are not doing enough you know, to translate what they have in allocation to something reasonable for the people to benefit from. That, that should be the attention or the responsibility of those who want to criticize to say this so, so, so money is coming to state governors. We are not seeing the results. Some governors are even complaining that they can't pay minimum wage. Well, Some are already saying I that uh, you know, it will be too heavy on them I and all of that. Fact, but there's so much. There's so much that is going Yes, please. Thank you. We have overextended our time for this uh, quite uh, memorable interview. Thank you for joining us for that discussion here on News. Thank you.